it's important to be able to print the Gantt effectively so that people can see what's going on. Before you print the Gantt, it's important to decide where the split between the table and the Gantt chart is placed. This placement of the split and the magnification and, and what you see on the screen does have impact on what's printed. Now I'd like to show just the task name, duration, start and finish column, so I'm going to hide the other columns to the right. I'm also just going to zoom over a little bit, so this is what I'm seeing on my screen. And then I'm going to go print preview. Now I could use the print preview button on my quick access toolbar that I added earlier in the sessions. If I go print preview, this is what will print. Now I can see here that I've got six pages. And in the bottom right corner, I can ask it to show me multiple pages, as it is, or a single page, or I can even ask it to give me actual size so I can read it. So I can view actual size, the whole single page, or multiple pages. That's what those buttons do. Um, I would use these triangles to move between the pages if I couldn't see them all, but I can. Now the first thing I want to do is look at page setup. When you go to page setup, you're actually able to influence what's printed. First of all it's going to print in landscape and I think that's desirable is to print landscape but we can also scale what's printed here. Now before I do that though what I do want to tackle is the legend first of all. I can see at the bottom of the first, second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth pages there's a legend that takes up a substantial almost quarter of the height of the page. So I'm going to choose legend at the top and I'm going to choose none. Either choose none or print a separate legend page, but I don't think it's necessary to put the legend at the bottom of every page. So I'm going to choose none and OK. And that has quite an impact, and that's why I wanted to do that first. That has quite an impact on the number of pages. So now it's two pages wide and two pages tall. I'm now going to actually control the date that it starts to print from. It's going to start printing from the 5th of the 6th. Now let's just back out of the print preview. This doesn't start till the 12th of the 6th. So I'm going to go back to print preview, or print, and tell it the 12th of the 6th. And that's just brought it in a little bit. And then I'm going to view all the pages. And here we see here we've cut it from 4 pages down to 2, and that's why I wanted to do that. But it's just a little bit too close on the 12th. So let's just change it to maybe the 9th. And that looks better. See how now the beginning of the Gantt's got a little bit of a gap, where before the gap was too large. So now I can see the columns I want to see, only through to finish, and I'm seeing the time um, scale showing nicely. And I'm only printing on two pages now instead of six or four. Now other things you can try in page setup is not only can you change the page landscape or portrait, but you can also um, scale if you wanted to. So if I wanted to, I could say fit to one page wide and one page tall, and OK. Now it fits exactly on one page, and if I click, which zooms in, that's how large it will be to read, which is not very clear. So I'll zo click and zoom out, and I'll go back to page setup. I do want it to be landscape, I do want it to fit on one page, but how about we change the paper size to maybe A3. Now you're only going to get A3 if you're connected to a printer that supports A3. So I'm going to cancel out of here and change to a printer I've got that does support A3. I'll change to the brother, then I'll go into page setup, and there I'll be able to choose A3, which is a larger page, and OK. And so it's a lot more clearer when I click and zoom in. So I've gone from six pages to one page and printing an A3 and landscape. In page setup, what else have we got? So it took 89% of the actual size to get it to fit on one page A3 landscape. The margins are in here. They can be reduced. Um, they are pretty small at the moment, 1.27 centimetres. I probably wouldn't take them much um, lower than one, so I'll just do that. And I might just do it just on the left and right. So you can adjust your margins. You've also got a border around the outside of the, every page, and I think that's good. Now the header and the footer is text that appears automatically at the head of every page and at the foot of every page. And what I'd like to show in the left, centre or right head of every page can vary. So in the left head of every page, I may want to actually see the company name. So I'm going to choose Project Fields. 
oops, sorry, general fields, and I'm going to choose company name. And it gets that company name from the project information advanced properties that we set up some time ago now. And I'm going to add that. And there you see Mad About Maintenance Limited. So there's the company name in the head left. And in the head right, I might like to see the project start date. And I'll add that. So that's when the project's starting. If I go to the footer, I can see that the page numbering automatically appears at the foot of the page. I may decide to actually drag over that and delete it. I'll click in the left section. I'll type the word page and press space. And this time I might click this button, which is going to give me the page number. That'll go page 1, page 2, page 3 and page 4. I'll then press space, type of, and press space, and this button here is going to give me the total number of pages. So for me it's going to be page 1 of 1, but if you can imagine that you've got quite a large project, it might say page 1 of 5, page 2 of 5, page 3 of 5, and so on. In the right section, I might decide to insert perhaps the name of the file. So I'll click that option, and that will appear in the bottom right. So you've got a number of buttons here. You've got page number, total number of pages. You've got the date and the time it was printed. Perhaps we put this in the center. In the center, I might put printed. And then I'll put the date, space, and the time. And that appears at the bottom of my page. So I've got the left, center, and right footer. And at the head of my page, I've got the left, nothing in the center, and on the right, I might actually add project start date, project starts, just so they know what that date is. So if I click OK, those are going to appear in the 1, 2, 3, 4 corners of my printout. So page setup allows you to set up headers and footers. You've also got the option legend, which we looked at earlier, and then there's a few more settings under view. For instance, under view, you can tell it to print all the columns, all the sheet columns, which I don't want to do. Or you can tell it to print just the first three columns. You can also print any notes if you've added them. I don't want to print any blank pages. I don't see the point of that, so I'll take that tick off, and I'll just go OK. At this point, I would then print however many copies to whichever printer and whatever date range and how many pages. And so you'd be able to print quite easily. So to get out of print preview, simply hit the back button and you'll go out of print preview.